organization. The military uh, knows how to take care of one another and how to minister to one another's needs and how to be there for one another. And so if you are, are family members of someone who is currently serving on active duty or family members of someone who is a veteran, would you stand for me, please? Take a look. Okay, that's how big an effect, how giant an effect the United States military has on your lives. And we're a very small microcosm, okay? So the other thing that we're, uh, we do around here with regularity, and that's uh, uh, the crux and the bottom and the core of who we are, is honor the Word of God. And one of the things that you do when you honor someone is to do what I just had you do, and that's to stand. Uh, we stand on a flag. The United States enters the room. We stand when you honor the Lord. We stand, okay, when we honor the Word of God because that is just the way that our body can show that we're giving honor. So I'm going to ask you to stand so that we can read the Word of God this morning. Spencer's going to read to us from Romans chapter 12, verse 10 and 11. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor serving the Lord. Scripture in Romans talks about, thank you Spencer, talks about honoring one another, okay, in love. It says, be devoted to one another. I think everybody in this room is devoted to one another, okay. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And our veterans, and their families, because they deserve honor. Okay, never lacking in zeal. That's never being, you know, never lacking. Don't, don't, don't get too excited about it. Okay, and keep your spiritual, spiritual, keep your spiritual fervor in serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patience, in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. who died in battle, or the 1.4 million who were wounded, 
We can, however, recognize and thank the 25 million veterans still living today. Please stand and this group will lead us in our national anthem. Lord, what am I doing? I'm 
this tiny little girl, and I'm 95 pounds, five foot nothing, what am I going to bring to the United States Air Force? They would have to special order my combat boots because they didn't come small enough. <laughs> so when I got out of basic training, it absolutely transformed me. And in basic training, they break you down to nothing. They take away your name, they take away your family. You don't get to call home, you don't get to write home, you don't get to talk to anybody that you knew in your past life. And they call you trainee, and that's what you have to identify to. And I remember being from Alaska and going to basic training in Texas. Uh, I remember getting nosebleeds because of the hot weather, and I would be in my formation, and I couldn't ask my nosebleed. I would say, "Sir, um, uh, sir, trainee, trainee re reports is ordered," and he's like, you know, yelling in my face, "Speak, speak, trainee!" And I would be like, "First permission to adjust," because I'm trying to catch my blood out of my nose, but you know what? These people in the United States Air Force and the Army and the Marines and every um, military establishment, they shape you, they break you down because what you were before is not what they can have. And they need to build you up to the airmen that they need to defend their country. It's just kind of how like Christ does. He breaks you down to what you were before and he builds you back up to the Christ follower he needs you to be. So after basic, I was stationed um, at Colbert Field. It's a special operations um, unit. Really, really enjoyed it. I got to do some really awesome, awesome stuff. Um, when the earthquake in Haiti happened, medical logistics, my shop was the first people to respond. We sent over $1.4 million worth of medical supplies for the survivors. It was incredible to know that this tiny little airman could make such a huge, huge impact. Um, so I spent four years, and that's where I met my husband, on base at the church. When we got married, uh, the Air Force couldn't put us together. So my husband, um, Zach Miller, was stationed in um, Washington while I was stationed in Florida. For a year and a half, that's how our marriage was. I was raising a six-month-old baby by myself, going to work 14 to 15 hours a day, but I loved it because I knew Christ wasn't going to put me through something that he wouldn't pull me through. And after that year and a half, it really strengthened my marriage because I said, you know, we can do this long distance for a year and a half and I've got a new baby and I've got a new family and I've got a new, you know, this new job. I'm good. We're good. So four years, the, uh, or a year and a half, the Air Force finally puts us together. We get stationed in Colorado Springs and I really enjoyed it. I myself had never deployed um, because I was a med tech and I took notes not to point a gun and shoot another human being. I took an oath to always try to save that human being. So um, I myself did not deploy. My husband did not deploy. Um, he did go to Korea. He served some time overseas a little bit for training and special operations. But So we went to Colorado and I spent the next six months. And by this time I was pregnant with my little girl, Sophia. And the Lord had told me that um, between my husband's job and mine, it to was taking a toll on our family. Um, I would drop my two kids off here. I'd drop my son off at daycare, work my 14, 15 hour shifts. I'd pick my son up at six o'clock and he would fall asleep and I'd have to put him down. Hardly ever saw my family. Um, and I mean, my in-laws here, I mean, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my best friends. And I was stationed so far away from them. So even seeing you guys was maybe once a year. So the Lord put it on my heart, and the Lord put it on Zachary's heart to, um, for me to separate. And I did it with a very heavy heart because for five years, that's all I knew. I had a sisterhood and a brotherhood of my Air Force airmen around me. And every day I put on that uniform with so much pride. And I laced up my special order combat boots with so much pride. And, um, but I did take the Lord's following and I did separate after five and a half years of service to be a stay-at-home mom with my kids. And my husband continued to full, uh, fulfill his enlistment. So now I'm with you guys, which I love. I love being a preschool teacher. I love being on staff with you guys and seeing your exit spaces every single morning. Don't think you realize that separating from the Air Force is really difficult, but what the Lord had in store for me now, like just to see your faces, that, that is such a rewarding experience for me. Um, I wouldn't take my service back. This is a really emotional day for me because when I did send my friends overseas to deploy, and I did go to those early parties. Sometimes I didn't come home.
sometimes I have to stand on the side of the road and salute my friends and their families if they weren't able to come home. They made the ultimate sacrifice, so I appreciate you guys appreciating us. Because not everyone gets to come home like me and my husband. So your guys' appreciation, and I've got a couple hugs. I know it probably took a little of you guys off guard the fact that I served, but the hugs and the thank yous, it means so much more to me than you guys even know. Um, so right now my husband's filling out, or fulfilling his active duty enlistment. He will be home with us for good in December. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited is an understatement. Every morning I see my mother-in-law and I'm like, it's a day closer to that. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak, and thank you for making such a big deal out of Veterans Day. Because I, I think we forget sometimes, and I think we take the little things for granted, but right now, there's someone lacing up boots and waking up at the crack of dawn that aren't with their families on holidays. They're not with their families every day. They're separated for years and months, and I appreciate you guys just appreciating this. Thank you so much.
God bless the USA, and you'll know when to stand, trust me.
bless you with his special love, strength, wisdom, and grace, that your fears may be overcome by love, that your faith may be made strong, that your courage would be made sure by God's presence. The Lord bless you and sharpen your skills, make your judgments true. May the Lord give you those things necessary to achieve your goals and to fight for his kingdom to advance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Take that. Splash it on somebody else, too. Thank you. 